Thank you for no holding no grudges against us, Heavenly Father. Thank you because you love us so much, Heavenly Father. Thank you because you gave your life for us, Heavenly Father. We could never thank you enough for all the things that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. But we will continue to worship you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to praise you, Heavenly Father. For you have done so much for us, Heavenly Father. We could never thank you enough. But we will continue to pray. We continue to do all the things that we can possibly do, Heavenly Father, to see your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we, we appreciate you. We love you, Heavenly Father. We adore you. We are put no one before you, Heavenly Father. For you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Heavenly Father. No, uh, the only way we can get to heaven, Heavenly Father, is through your Son, Jesus. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for him, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. For we know without you, Heavenly Father, it's impossible to do anything that we are doing, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the mercy that you have upon us, Heavenly Father. We adore you, Heavenly Father. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you. Open your mouth and begin to pray, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are wonderful, Heavenly Father. We adore you. There is none like you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here safely this morning, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that anyone that's on their way here this morning, Heavenly Father, that you guide them and lead them in the righteous way. Protect them on their way here, Heavenly Father. Protect each and every one, Heavenly Father. Open every heart and heart, Heavenly Father. Break it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to guide us, Heavenly Father. Protect us, Heavenly Father. Protect our children, Heavenly Father. Guide them, O Lord. Lead them them in the righteous way, Heavenly Father, away from all the e idols and evil things out here, Heavenly Father. Protect them, Heavenly Father. Break their heart, Heavenly Father, and, and softness and, 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 and put your word into their hearts, Heavenly Father, so they would not be thinking about the things of the world, but only the things of you, Heavenly Father, for you are worthy, Heavenly Father. You are worthy to be praised, Heavenly Father. We adore you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this church, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the members in the church, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless each and every one of them in the Heavenly Father, that no one will backslide, Heavenly Father, that they will continue to move forward in the name of Jesus. We bless them, Heavenly Father. We'll continue to pray for each and every one of them, Heavenly Father, that they will continue to stay in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Heavenly Father. We adore you, Heavenly Father. We, we thank you for every member here, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to pray in worship them, Heavenly Father. Anything that they are going through, Heavenly Father, we ask that you lift it in the name of Jesus. Take everything away from them, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Do you, Heavenly Father, you say, what do we ask for you will deliver for us, Heavenly Father. So we ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to watch over us. You continue to guide us, Heavenly Father. And because, Heavenly Father, sometimes we don't know what we're going to do, what is right and what is wrong. But, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to watch over and guide us and accept us, Heavenly Father, for we are still in the beginning stages, Heavenly Father. We know that we still need you each and every day, Heavenly Father, because without you, we are nothing. Without you, Heavenly Father, we've been able to walk or talk, Heavenly Father. It is you who put breath in our body every morning, Heavenly Father. It is you who woke us up this morning, Heavenly Father. Without you, Heavenly Father, we wouldn't even be here, Heavenly Father. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We worship your holy name. We adore you, Heavenly Father. There is none like you, Heavenly Father. You are our Lord, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We worship you. We adore you. There is none like you. We thank you for your grace, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything that you have done, Heavenly Father. There is none like you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. We appreciate you, Father. We adore you, Father. We know without you, Heavenly Father, we wouldn't be able to make it. So we just thank and appreciate you for all you have done. We love you, Heavenly Father. We worship you, Heavenly Father. Oh, how we love you, Father. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he 
first loved me. Thank you, Father. We adore you. We will continue to praise your holy name, for there is none like you. We worship you, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to worship you that you continue to bless us, Heavenly Father, and we will continue to worship you in the name of Jesus. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to send more members to our church, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you bring us a bigger church, Heavenly Father, a larger congregation, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you uh, that you uh, uh, bring finances to our church, Heavenly Father. Everything that we need, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will deliver to us in the name of Jesus. Continue to we will continue to bless you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to worship you, Heavenly Father, for you are doing great things in our life, Heavenly Father, and we can never thank you enough, but we will continue to worship you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to do your work, Heavenly Father. We will continue to preach and pray to anyone that we see, Heavenly Father. Anyone who is willing to listen, Heavenly Father, we will deliver your message in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We adore you, Father. We worship your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Place open to our hymn, GHS 72. The solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide us, face our rest in his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my uncle hold within the veil.
Remain standing. It is time for search the scripture. Um, may we check the chorus again, then we'll pray after the count of uh, two. One, two. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let's sing it like we're praying. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other sun is sinking sun, all other ground is sinking sun. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord in heaven, we thank you because we're standing on a solid rock. Father, you are the beginning and you are the end. Before we were formed, Father, you were there. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for the opportunity that we are not on sinking sand. Father, that means that death is not for us but living is ours. Because we are on a solid rock that Lord in heaven that our legs will never sink. We thank you for that gracious gift. Father, as we're going to go into your word this morning, Lord, we look up to you. Father, open our hearts and open our mind, and Lord in heaven, let your spirit reign here. Let your word reign. Father, we are not here to exalt ourselves, but Father, to exalt you. Lord in heaven, it's an opportunity for us to come before you because we are nothing. But with you, we are little Christ. We thank you for that love and understanding. Father, we bless your word. We thank you for the word that you're going to give to us today, this morning from this pulpit. Father, let it come directly from you. Father, there will be no human interference this morning. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. May we all be seated. Amen. Are you grateful and happy that you're standing on a solid rock? Think about it. If this was a sun you're sitting on, would you be able to close your eyes? You know, every time you'll be thinking about the fact that you're going to sink down and probably by the time you close your eyes, you're praying. You say, amen, the sun is right here. Praise the Lord. But we are not sitting or standing on a sinking sand. We are standing on the solid rock, which is Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God the Son. Praise the Lord. Last week, we, the week before last week, we spoke about the saints' spiritual uh, welfare, taking care of the saints. Spiritual welfare. Feeding as we feed ourselves physically, so does our spiritual life need feeding. And how do we feed our spiritual lives? By reading the Word of God, and by praying constantly to God, and by communing with one another, meaning that coming together as the body of Christ, as we are seated this morning to listen to the word of God. So we feed the spirit also. Amen. And then uh, last week we spoke about knowing. When you say that you know. And I went ahead yes, uh, uh, to speak about and try to connect the word that we heard from our general overseer. 
You know, when he read the book, I think it's James chapter 4, if I remember correctly. He spoke about how the Holy Spirit that is in us is jealous. It's not a worldly jealousy. But it's jealous so that we cannot be overcome by the spirit of darkness. You know, the Holy Spirit so much loves me and you that the Holy Spirit wants us to remain pure and holy and not to be overtaken by the enemy. In our know, jealousy to holiness, we heard about it. Today we are going to look at our lesson number 674, Total Freedom from Sin. Praise the Lord. Total freedom from sin. Our memory verse is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. You either open to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, or you can open to the side of scriptures book. It's on page number 349. If you are there, can you say amen? If you are not there, can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Everybody is awake this morning. Amen. After the count of two, let's take our memory verse together. One, two. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin. Born of God. First John chapter 3 verse 9. Praise the Lord. John, he devoted the text here to the glorious freedom for me and you when we become born again and saved. We'll look at First John. We'll read First John chapter 3. Verse 1 to 10. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. John is writing and explaining to us how we'll be transformed like Jesus himself. First of all, he talked about that we are bestowed and we are called the sons of God. Jesus is the son of God. And here we're going to see later on how, what it means that we are created in the image of God. What it means that you are like God. For you to become like Jesus, you have to be transformed. It is not because that you are human created by God that it means that you are the son of God. You are not. You only become the son of God if you give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ and become transformed. Be not deceived by what you hear today from people. The Bible is very clear. Yes, me and you are created by God. We are his handiwork. But, we only get adopted, you know, when the paperwork is signed. I read about adoptions and heard on, in the news. You only get adopted when you sign the paperwork. You know, you say, well, I don't have to, I want to adopt children. 
You have to go through the legal paperwork and get the paperwork signed. Until that signature is on that paper, you are not. It's the same thing. Well, you know, you are created by God, yes. But are you sons and daughters of God? No. You only become one when you give your life to Jesus. The Bible is that time. That is when God signs the paperwork. You know, Christ is interceding on our behalf, on my, you and your behalf. You know, when you give your life to God, at that time that you're praying, Father, Lord, save me, you know, Christ has the paperwork right in front of his Father. As you're saying, Amen, God is signing. He is signing the paperwork. He's saying, Christ has all his attorneys around and uh, God signing and puts his stamp. You are the sons and daughters of God when you give your life to Christ. The Bible, the Bible is very clear about that. Every man that had his hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. So it is not only that you become the sons of God, but you also become pure. You are purified with no sin, spotless. Whosoever commits sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Praise the Lord. Sin is the transgression of the law. If you look at human existence and the ethics of our lives is hinged on the Bible. Because thou shalt know still. Uh, if I remember, there is no country where if you steal is not a sin. If you are caught, my brothers and sisters, there is no, no matter how corrupt that country is, stealing is stealing. It doesn't matter in any form. That shall not kill. If you kill and you are caught, they will have to find out why you killed someone. Even in the secular world, you know, when you go to be a witness in court, they ask you to take, to take an oath to say that everything I'm going to say is nothing but the truth. That is the law of God. He's still the law of the land. And the Father in heaven is saying, when you sin, you have transgressed the law. Whose law? The law of the Father. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins and in him is no sin. You know, previously before Christ came himself down on earth, we kept commandments. You memorize commandments. But it's saying that you no longer commit sin. It's written, the law is written in your heart. Don't be deceived because sometimes there are people who say, well, grace abounds so the law is no longer there. Let me read it again for you. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Our Father in heaven is said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Be not deceived. The law is still there. The only difference is that when you are saved and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, amen, you don't even think about it. It is embedded in your heart. The law is not written. You no longer, it's written in your heart. When the thought comes about you want to steal something, somebody's thing, the Father, is the, the Spirit in you is telling you, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. They ask you to do, to break the law you are saying, in fact, before they finish, I don't even want to hear you talk about it. So the Bible is saying, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinned not. Whosoever sinned had not seen him, neither 
known him. If you know the Father, sin disappears from your heart. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the evil. Right from the beginning, the devil sinned. He transgressed against the Father. Be not deceived today if you say you are born again and you are still committing sin. Go back to the Father. That is what the Bible is saying. Go back and kneel down and tell the Father that I need to be purified. The only way that you know that your heart is pure, it is when sin no longer lives in you. Are you going to be tempted? Yes, you will. Even Christ himself was tempted several times when he went to the mountain. At the end of his fasting. Are we all going to be tempted every minute? Yes. But our Father in heaven has given me a new grace. He said that you shall not be tempted above your own strength that the Father has measured you and me. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remained in him and cannot sin because he is born of God of God. The seed of God is in you. Every time that the thought of sin comes, you know, you rebuke it because you have the power to become the sons and daughters of God. Because the Holy Spirit dwelleth in you and me. If you cannot rebuke sin, my brothers and sisters, you have to go back again to the Father and ask for purification of your heart. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever do, uh, doeth no righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. You know, our Father in heaven said, when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He gave two. And I'll tell you that those two that Christ in heaven spoke about covered all the commandments of God that I have just read to you. He said, love thy neighbor as yourself. If you always put yourselves in somebody's shoes, have you ever woken up and said, you know, I've had fights with people who are close to me about putting themselves in my shoes. You know, sometimes, um, once in a while, I get phone calls at odd hours from work. I'll take the phone and run into the, uh, the bathroom and close the door. Why would I do that? So one time my wife woke up and she, who are you talking to that you had to run to the bathroom and close the door? I was like, do you want to talk to him? called my colleague and said, I put the phone on the speaker phone and said, can you hear what uh, my wife is saying? She was like, why did you do this to me? What I told her was that I didn't want to wake her up from sleep. That was why I went to the bathroom to talk. Do you put, do you put yourselves in someone's shoes and that is the commandment of God you know you're walking through the door somebody is coming you stop you open the door you slide yourself away 
as you open that can of food to eat, you look around, there are people sitting around, you say, do you want to share in my plate of food? One of the greatest commandments. And the second one, it says that you should love your God, your Lord, your God. And then if you go further, our Father in heaven says, if you love me, you keep my commandment. So it is finished. Two greatest commandments of our Father. He has given us the powers to become the sons of God. When John wrote this text, John wrote the text to celebrate the freedom that me and you have. That when you become born again, you have the powers to become the children of God. Because John understands our nature as human beings. That we always tend towards, you know what you call the default. Our natural default is to default to sin. Because we are born of flesh. We are born from Adam and Eve. That have passed on that sin. That's our immediate default. But what a power. That God himself sent his son. When John wrote this, he sent his son to come and die for me and you. To give up his life so that we can be purified. To become the sons and daughters of God. Our Father in heaven substituted punishment. He took away the punishment that is supposed to be borne by me and you. Who here will say, well, I want to be crucified on the cross to put nails on my hand for Brother Benjamin. To carry a huge cross. Chastisement, if I understand the definition of being chastised, is like you have a whip that has knives at the end of it. As you are being whipped, it cuts your skin. Who here will say, well, let me go and carry the cross for Brother Benjamin. But Christ gave his life for that. He was chastised, he was beaten, he was spat on. Just for why to take away, to be the substitute. So this is God, pure. He became sin. Sorry, he became, he, um, he, he, he was punished. For our sin. He took the punishment. Took the punishment for our sins. So that me and you will never be punished. God himself. What kind of love is that? The divine suffering and penalty of sin for me and you. Who here will suffer for me? He bore my pain. He bore your pain. And he bought. So he bought freedom. He said he was given for what? If I remember correct, a ransom, right? Am I right? A ransom. You know, you hear about people being kidnapped. They say, we'll pay ransom before we release. Uh... He gave his life as a ransom. In substitute for me and you. I want you all to think about that. When you say you're a child of God and you remain in sin, think about the fact that Jesus gave his life for me and you as a ransom. To free us, to free me and you. Total freedom from sin. You know, he's saying that you, you are kidnapped. 
They say, well, pay one million dollars so we we'll release your parents. The devil took us into captivity. He said, well, if that ransom is not paid, I'm not going to give you all up. But Christ sacrificed himself and gave himself as a ransom for me and you. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. When you say you're a son of God, people who don't understand will say, What are you talking about? Because they didn't even know Christ himself. When he said that he was the son of God, he said, he said if you know me, if you know where I'm coming from, if you know, if you know my father, if you know me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If I remember correctly, even when Christ himself was being questioned, where's your Father? You know it, know where, my, where I come from, Christ said. He said, I'm the Son of God because he, Christ gave the example that here on earth, that you people, when two people witness something, it means it's true. He said, I'm the son of God because me and my father have witnessed it. We know. People still did not understand. Transformation through God's love. First John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has his hope in him purifies himself, even as he is purified. Me and you will be transformed. Through the gracious work of God. That when you give your life to Christ, you become completely transformed from a sinner to no sin. From impure to purified. Because he is given his life as a ransom to take the sin away. He says, what manner of love that is bestowed upon us. Christ died. He makes me a new, I've said his sons and daughters of our father in heaven. For that sacrifice that he made. So for the sacrifice that he made. He transforms us to become the sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. The transformation that you go through only through the love of Christ himself and the love of his Father. By sacrificing himself in Calvary, we are all purified. You only become the sons of God, like I've repeatedly said, if you are born again. If you are. The words, the words become the son of God, reveal that all are not children of God. Let's look at Ephesians 2, chapter 3. If somebody opens before me, you can read Ephesians 2, chapter 3. And let somebody read... Um, Colossians 3, 6. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3, 6. Praise the Lord. 
those we bear sin, but at the point of transformation. Amen? At the point of transformation, if we look at Colossians 3, 6, it says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. When we are not born again, the wrath of God will come upon you. But the transformation happens when Christ wipes all the sins away. There is no longer wrath. When you are born again, your life becomes righteous. And you are transformed to holiness. You are transformed to a life of freedom. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from eternal death. What more freedom do you want? That you are free from death. You live forever. And you are free from sin. You are no longer in bondage to anything. What does it mean in bondage to anything? You are not in bondage to worldly things. Material things. Anger. Depression. Sickness. You are no longer in bondage. You are completely free. Because it's only your redeemer that lives in you. You live your life like Christ himself. Distinguishing marks of God's children. What makes you a God's child? The mark, the first mark is you're totally free from sin. If you are not free from sin, re-examine your life. First John, um, First John chapter one verse nine. Anyone who opens can read. First John. First John chapter one verse nine. Praise the Lord. Simple. Distinguishing marks of the children of God. Can somebody read Galatians 5.1? If you open, when you're a child of God, you are completely free of sin. You have assurance of salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. It says that Christ has made you free. When you are free, what makes you distinguishable as the children of God? You live your life uprightly. You no longer commit sin. You have become the child of God. Amen? There is no sin in your life. You are upright. You are very righteous. Genuine repentance. When you are a child of God, the Spirit lives in you. You are not quick to anger. You live your life according to what the Bible says. You are what? A new creature. God listens to your prayer. You are very patient. You are always seeking after Christ. Amen. You conform to righteousness and you live your life as the image of God in heaven. God in heaven does not have a child that sins. If, you're, if you have sin in your life, then you are not the child of God. Children of God are completely free from sin. They have been taught that, you know, during, 
John's time that the Gnostics think that whatever you put in you cannot, that whatever your actions you put forth cannot defile you. The modern day Gnostics say, they will say that uh, you can live your life whatever way that you want. It doesn't matter. That once born again, you are saved forevermore. You can live your life whatever way you want. You can go do anything. You still go to heaven. That's not what the Bible is saying. When you are a child of God, you no longer have the ability to sin. That ability is taken away. You become righteous. You are godly. God teaches me and you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. If you are still bound by that bondage of worldliness, looking around and seeing what the worldly people are doing, you know, the chasing of the material things, the chasing, be content. If you are a child of God, you are content. If you are a child of God, you have love in your heart. Because the Father in heaven says what? He says, love thy neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your Father. And he says that uh, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Be not deceived. You know, Paul said that what shall we say then? He, he, Paul says he knew that everyone received God's grace free from, is free from sin. That when me and you will receive the grace of God, we are free from sin. He says, he says, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Because we have the grace, then should we continue to sin because we know that, well, I'll sin today, tomorrow I'll go and ask for forgiveness, I'll be forgiven. So you're jumping in and out of, you know, sin and, and no sin. Can you be trusted by God? One of uh, our managers at work, he said he loves people who stick to their word, ideas, what they believe in. He said, I'm somebody who believes in my ideas and stick to them. And I told him, I said, if you are somebody who does not believe in your ideas and stick to it, can you be trusted? If today I am saying something different, tomorrow I'm saying something different, can you trust me? It's the same. If you say you're a child of God, today you're committed, tomorrow you're not. Today you're here. Can God trust you? That he can point a finger at you and say, devil, go and test my child, like he said with Job. You know, you said that you're a, you're a saint. And, uh, people go ahead and, uh, you know, commit fornication or adultery. They tell lies. They steal. They curse. They fight. And they kill other human beings. Are you really, really free from sin? This conduct is not expected from me and you. We are bigger than that. We are pure and holy. Whosoever abided in sin, abided not in God. A sinner will never see God. It would be better for a believer to die than for him to taste the bitter drugs of sin. I heard the story about a man whose wife passed. The agony was so much that he, when he went to the graveyard, he prayed the prayer of, Father, if I'm going to remain here and not be pure, I want my life to be taken so that I go with my wife. He was so grieved that he was fearful of his life, that because his wife has left him, that he might not be able to be pure anymore. There and then he fell down and died. He was buried beside his wife. God will listen 
to your prayer. A lot of times we are afraid. We are afraid. But this is a man who knew where he was going to. If you really are born again, you know where you're going to. There is no fear. You know, like we were talking last week, and uh, I'm not going to say that um, I have the freedom. I said, I have the freedom. I can go anywhere and work. Because of that freedom, there is no fear of losing a job. I tell you, I can always get a job. And it's the same. When you're free, you're born again, you are free. Purpose of Christ's sacrifice. Christ sacrificed himself for me and you to be free. To be free of damnation. All we have to do is to obey his word and live our lives righteousness and not to be cold today, be warm tomorrow, be lukewarm the day after, be hot another day. God expects me and you to be hot 24 hours a day for him till he comes. Describe the wonder of God's love as manifested in your life, family or in the life of a fellow believer. Describe the wonder of God's love as manifested in your life, your family, or another believer. That's our question number one. Amen. Describe the wonder of God's love as manifest in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a personal question that I ask our sister. But that is the question in the side of the scriptures, amen. And by the grace of God, that uh, she gave a beautiful answer. Praise the Lord. Our pastor wanted to talk. Yeah, yes. I lost one of my siblings about a year ago, and then I was talking to I was talking to Pastor that I, I was totally condemned in my heart that I didn't do anything to save that my sibling because of my father has a bigger boss and then he, he was convincing on so I I was so down Praise the Lord. We thank you for the testimony. Like our pastor said, he mentioned something that caught my attention, that um, in a family of 10 siblings, one rich person is not rich. Everyone is poor. Because by the time that you look at the whole family and probably divide the wealth, you know, there's still problems. Because from the, the other night, they'll be sick, they have no money to eat, they have no clothing to wear, they have no house to stay. 
But he was talking in the spiritual realm that because he's rich spiritually, his life is saved. If he's the only one, he's still being dragged down because he's poor in spirit. But his prayers are that God will uplift because when the Father in heaven uplift the other people and make them saved, then he becomes rich. Because instead of always draining from him, they'll be adding on to his to him also. We we'll pray that our Father in heaven will answer his prayers in Jesus' name. What are the steps a sinner back, struck backslider needs to take to be set free from sin? A sinner and backslider, what is the step that they need to take? Amen. Praise the Lord. How may one know that he or she has become a child of God? How do you know? Praise the Lord. Yes, brother Steve. Amen. Amen. You're a new creature. You know, there's a song that says, The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see the spirit of the Lord is reigning here. Amen. Um, you know, when somebody who knew you before, when they see you, are they going to say you are different? This is not a person I used to know. Amen. Mention to Iranians believe that encourage lose living by professing believers. Mention erroneous beliefs. What are the beliefs that allow people to start living loose lives? Praise the Lord. Amen. A pastor rightly answered it. You can just do whatever you want. Yes, sir. Amen. This has been a great side of the scriptures this morning. Mention the benefits, sinners. Uh, so it's either that I taught very well or God touched the heart of everyone here. Amen. Probably the second one. Mention the benefits sinners and saints can enjoy from Christ's sacrifice. What are the benefits that sinners and saints can enjoy from the sacrifice of our Father. Praise the Lord. Complete and total freedom from sin. When you give your life, you are free. Total freedom from sin. By the grace of God, next week, our side the scriptures is going to be lesson number 675, the fruit of the Spirit. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we bless your name. Father, we thank you for the freedom you've given to us through your son, Jesus, for the salvation that we have 
and for the freedom that we have. Father, keep us straight. Lord in heaven, keep us on the journey, on the narrow road until you come. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are always conscious of our time, but I don't know if I have given everyone of us the time schedule that the headquarters sent. If I have not done that, I will, I will make sure we have it so that uh, sometime when we are late, we know that we are not late. But God is going to help us in Jesus' name. I know this is a local church. God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. But we are grateful for Almighty God. Um, the second one that as I sat down, I was thinking about what about if we have evangelism team so that we will increase our visitation. Like at least maybe every Saturday, the leader will make sure that we visit at least one person that is not a member. I think my wife always do that before. But now, um, she's becoming a family man, a family woman. Then it was only the husband and the little actor. And now we have Sanjia, we have a lot of bee to cater for. So God is going to help us in Jesus' name. Sister Priscilla, I want you to look at that angle. God will help you in Jesus' name. Whereby we are going to be visiting at least one person in a week. Please. God will help us in Jesus' name. All right. Another thing I want us to look at, if I see Bra, Bra Stephen, Bra Stephen is supposed to be doing that because he is the evangelism, the uh, house fellowship is the is, uh, evangelism is under house fellowship. Evangelism is under house fellowship. So he is the one that's supposed to be doing that. But with my closeness nowadays, the brother is busy, including the pastor that is using him. God will help us in Jesus' name. But uh, God will use everyone for my people in Jesus' name. So please consider that. And then, bless me, my brother, uh, uh, sister, please like, put it on your hand, please. I know the sending out of the letters have not been, no, that's not working well. It may be from me. God will help from us in Jesus' name. So when we are saying sin, what do we understand by sin? By sin, let us go to practical. Because there are some things each individual do, uh, individual does that we keep silence. And then it's like, and you are calling yourself a Christian, and you are calling your, yourself a brother. And then you come to the pulpit today, you preach this message, and then you are in the church today, you answer the question. And you are in the church today, you pre, you, you you contribute to this me, me, to this lesson. When we say sin, what is a sin? Satan nature. What is Satan nature? Let's go to practical. Satan nature is a little a lot of things like Satan nature, drinking, alcoholic, Satan nature. You know that something is going to drink beer, but you give that person the money to buy beer. Satan nature. You lie, and I will bring one example now that my brother will surprise that I, I take I take conscience of it on that day. You get you get me. Then, if you want to define sin, which one do you commit last week, and you say it doesn't matter? Let us be sincere. You know, there's one ideology that people always use. We always smart. And then it was one of my, our pastors that told us when we were in the college or something like that. Uh, let me see in the college. Brahma, you have eaten. What did you eat? I've eaten. Automatically, the brother that is asking me, this one may be too big, the way you are going to lick it. Know that I've eaten. But you want to know the kind of food that I, I, I ate so that maybe you can do one thing or the other. But we know that uh, maybe I just use that one as a, as a sample. Like if we say I have, I have eaten, maybe we want to give us ten dollar or five dollar. It won't able to give us. We we maneuver our way. We say we we, we use reason. Sister Priscilla, can you give me ten dollar? 
I don't have any money in my hand, but that's a twenty dollar. But the reason is that you don't want if you give that twenty dollar, you have specified there's something you want to use that twenty dollar for, and it will affect it. But already the twenty dollar is in your hand, and you say you don't have any more any money in your hand. What is that? And if you are a child of God, you don't. Where did you go? Brother Stephen. Ah, I'm just coming from there. That there does not have it, the name of the place. If I know you are not coming from anywhere, I won't ask you. I have a reason for asking you. Where did you go? Ah, I'm coming from Brother Benjamin House. Uh -huh. You are expecting that if I say you are coming from Brother Benjamin House, you have gone to discuss about Pastor Matthew. Why can't you leave that one for God? But within you yourself, you know that you are hiding something. What is that? Then somebody steals something from Walmart. And then he put it into the pocket. And then they say, what do you put in the pocket? They say, there's nothing there. And then even we, we are saying you are a liar. But I ask you, Sister Priscilla, where are you coming from? I'm coming from that place. And we are in the same church together. We are members of the same church together. But you say, that place does not have a name. And within me, I know that you are lying. What is that? The man that sees something from one man that put it in the pocket that said no. You that has asked that where are you coming? From where? You said I'm just coming from that place. And you know that if you mention that place, there's something that will come out of, out of it. And there anything that is being hiding. My dear brother, my dear sister, there's something there. Let us be sincere. Let us be sincere. If I have a phone and then my wife wants to check it and then immediately she's, I mean, she is coming in, I, I mean, or something like that, I, like, I don't know, maybe she pretty, even my wife pretty message one day that as far as so, uh, the husband is coming from the upstairs or the wife is coming from the upstairs and the first book we, we, we tend to World 2016. What is that? Let us be a practical Christian. Let us be sincere. Let us be a practical. And that is why I mentioned something last week. Why we have a lot of Pastor W. F. Kumuyi in the deeper life, but they are not as zeal like Pastor W. F. Kumuyi. Little, little thing. That destroy the fire. There's a lot of things I will have mentioned, but all of us are family. We are so close. That we know each other. That many times, if I'm speaking in the, in, on the pulpit, it's like, it's, but I always make my own too. As an example, you know, there's not anyone of you I've ever been talking to, you know, I don't hide. Not because I cannot hide. To be sincere, not that I don't know how to stop, shut up on my mouth. And not that I'm too open. But the reason is this. What, what, I mean, what, what you do not know about my life? What do I accept? I do not want to talk. What do I not know about your life? To be sincere. And then immediately you change. Or you do something. I know. If I do not press you forward, just believe because I'm a peaceful man. That's why I do not press you forward. Recently I was with Brassiving and I was so, so conscious and I, he, he, may, he may not take notes. Somebody called me and the, the best thing, the person can understand is that 
I am in school. But I was with Brother Stephen. Already I supposed to go to, to be in school and then but I have to do that mass and I do not know that mass. I sat we I have to come to his house. We are doing that mathematics together. So the phone rang, the phone rang and when the person said, Where are you? The best place he can understand that I was that he will not he will not make mention of oh come now, let us do this thing now is school. So I said I was in school. I did not know if Brass even take me. I look at his house and I, I was a little bit shake. That if pastor can do this, that's me. I'm not wrong if I've done or believing that it's all righteous. So pastor is not righteous. My own righteousness is even better than, than pastor righteous. Righteousness. My dear brother, I, we don't see you in the church last week. Where did you go? I went somewhere. I know you went somewhere. That's why you are not seeing you in the church. And that if there's no skeleton in your body, there's no reason why, as a child of God, that your pastor or your, 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 those people who are coming to church with you cannot know where you go. If they don't know where you go, something is there that is not right to us before God. Let us be sincere. And that's something that is catching some of us that we have a lot of things to do. But how can I present this case? If I'm not in the church today, how can I present it? That's why we say conscience. Our conscience will specify if we are a child of God. Let us practicalize what we are learn, what we have learned. So if we are not great spiritually, if there's something in our life, and then we keep coming every day, we are saying this, we are saying that. That, that one take me to best fast in my in Bible. Romans chapter 2. I love that fast. Romans chapter 2. The book of Romans chapter 2. I think first 17. I love that fast. The book of Romans Romans chapter 2 uh, 17 Okay Okay, just read it one by one Behold You are called a Jew Behold You are called a Christian Behold You are called a member of deeper life Behold you are called a pastor. Be oh, you are called a leader in the house of the Lord. Be old, you are called a Bible reader. Do you know when Matthew was writing the, the book of uh, the book of Matthew, it was directed to Jew. Other people can read it, but that's the purpose. But that's when you see him use a lot of terminology that concerning about you. So Paul was writing this letter to them that you are calling yourself a righteousness. We come to church like this today. We listen to a lot of this kind of message. Then something happened one day, like the one I said, and then we are not. I do not, I not I'm not justifying myself. But even may not take note of that day I, I took notes. I'm not justifying myself for lying. Because that day, I, it was, it, not it was, I was lying. Now, look at this. I continue. And rest in the law. You get what I'm saying? And rest in the law. You, the law here is that you believe the Bible. You read the Bible. You interpret the Bible. <coughs> And make your boast of God. And you are saying you know God. You are worshiping God. You are carrying your Bible. Any little thing, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Any little thing, the Litanonomy, 
eight, nine. And then, I know it's we. We tell you, you know that lying is not good. Stealing is not good. Bearing false prophets is not good. By but is not good. Tell me that is not good. You know all those things very, very well. And you can tell unbeliever, you can tell believer that it's not good. And I prove the things that are more excellent. But if somebody do something, you know how to say, Oh, this leader, what I don't like about him is that he doesn't do this. This leader, what I don't like about him, that he's engaging this. Then, the Bible continues. Be instructed out of the law. You know how to instruct about that law, especially somebody like us that we come from deeper life. We start, I was telling, I don't know if my brother or any one of you I was telling, that one thing I believe about deeper life in Charlotte is this. Many of us might have been wounded, but still we stand on the word of the Lord. And we, by the grace of the Lord, I told that person, I can't remember the person I was telling, no matter whomever is that coming to deeper life Bible church or Charlotte Free, the only thing that we draw that can send him away is the word of the Lord because we are not going to change. And then I know many of us, I doubt it sometime. After we are left church, I will, doubt, I will be thinking that is this brother, is this sister not thinking that we are talking about him? But praise the Lord, I've never seen any one of us that we, we are we are standard member that because of the preaching of that last Sunday, because of the preaching of Monday, because of the, our discussion in our fellowship, we say, I'm not coming again. So the Bible now said, okay, okay, I, I'm confident that you, you yourself are a guy of the blind. You are directing people. You are the one that is, that is directing them. Let's go on this way. Let's go on this. Believing that you know about the word of the Lord. Believing that you know about the commandment of the Lord, and are confident that you yourself are a guide of the man, a light of them which are in the darkness. Like many of us always say, like our teacher, I, in my place of work, I told you recently, one of my teacher just saw me say, okay, I'm taking you out for, for, for lunch. Not because of any other thing, but later when we got there, he was telling me, Matthew, I'm a pastor too. Now let's see the reason why he said, okay, let us go out for lunch. So he, he saw me as a light. He saw me as a... Uh, then, but within me, look at what Paul was saying. An instructor of the foolish. I see somebody that is the foolish. And I condemn them. I, what, I, I, think, I think one of our meeting here, we are talking about... I and Brad Stephen were talking about somebody. And I said, Brad Stephen, do you know why I don't normally condemn them? Not that I don't condemn them. But I quickly read something. That what about this side of our own life? That have the same red card, but because their own is fair, is public. Our own is within our circle, and we quickly conclude. Unfortunately, when they get to the kingdom of God, God will not judge them because of us. He's going to judge everybody individually. So either they they do wrong, or we they do wrong, we are going to be judged according to our deed. So, the Paul was not saying, a uh, instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babies, those people who have not matured in Christianity. And I got in and I was teaching them, I was saying, this does not go, that does not go, this does not go. But within me, secret girlfriend, secret accounts. To the extent that if I'm on the Facebook and the brass even sit down with me, you know, I only, I only, I only be careful. Recently, we, our, <laughs> brass even doesn't know that. Only take, we are on the, we are doing the mass together. Then we come to the Facebook. Then somebody show appearance and look at his eyes. He may not take note. But the anything that we let him stumble, I will only be careful that I preserve myself from it, especially when he's with me.
because if you don't know who, who that person is to me that does not matter does it genuine you know i've led to a, 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 a example now he might have not taken note that i took notes <coughs> now the bible is not say a teacher of baby which have the form of knowledge and the and of the truth of the law you know this bible very well from the day it could say and you can know the commandment if a man put on a o you know there's no good for a man to put on a o but you you have a o in arts that you are abhorring a lot of things that is not glorify the name of the law you don't you don't you don't take care of that my husband have you sent money to your mommy at home no just because i couldn't send money to our home mom what is that And she will be laboring. Recently, uh, Pastor Dada, uh, so, sorry to always make you mention that part of my life. Pastor Dada was telling me that, uh, how are you taking care of your money? It is, uh, and I, I told him a lot of things, and uh, I told him about my wife. Sorry, I didn't even tell her this, that this is what she has been doing, this is what I've been doing, okay. But later, maybe I send money, and then she asked me, that my husband, mommy is doing this, mommy is doing this. Won't you send a lot of a little money? But because I know she has been trying, sending money to her, and then I've not sent to her more mom, and then she, I don't want her to be furious or do not happy, and then she, I said no. What have I done? Like, fast, fast, I'll fail every one of us. And I not come, and I come here. We are discussing the word of the Bible in the house fellowship. And I say, oh, lying is not good. Lying is stupidity. Lying is stupidity before God is not according to the word of the law. And look at what the Bible says. You who preach a man should not steal. Do you steal? The problem member. Pastor Matthew, our brother Benjamin, brother Stephen, sister Priscilla. Uh, Sister Amanda, Bra Chapman, my wife, the young youth. You, you that said somebody is a thief. Paul was saying, Yes, I've accepted that you call that particular person a thief. And I know because you call him a thief, he's a thief. But you that calling somebody a thief, are you still me? that he said you therefore we teach another do you not teach yourself did you make fun of the gentile world but little apply themselves to the law at least as they should have we christians we make just of the people of people of the world but within our circle, if I say I'm going by five o'clock out with my close name with Brother Stephen, we need to suspect because already I only will be with the children. And I said, Brother Stephen, please, I'm not going to be with the children. But the question, ah, oh, Pastor, where are you going today? I just want to tell something like that. I didn't know my schedule in school. Something wrong. Let us be sincere. And there's something I want to do that I don't want him to know. What's that thing? And the, the question say, you who say a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Everybody see us in the church. But big be a half argument with my wife, a lot of things, and then I started having a internet uh, arrangement. 
But I come to poop it. And I was saying, no. I started go back to the past, go back to the front, go say in the middle. Paul now look at all those things that yes, I know. You said this person has committed adultery. Yes, we are ready to stone him as Jesus said with you, I mean, as you always told. But you, my dear brother, you, my dear sister, you, my, our dear teacher, you, our dear pastor. If we say now, let us go to, to your Facebook and let us open it. Are you ready? If we say, okay, fine. Let us open your bag. After all, you have told me that what I'm doing is not good. I accept it. And you said that person, the person is condemned. But I know you are very, very faithful. I just want to help you to carry your bag today. But immediately you said, let me carry my bag. You are afraid of if that bag falls. The letter there, the message there, the brother or sister may see it. But are you deceiving me? Or you are deceiving yourself? So Paul now look at all those things. He said, you who say a man should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You who are born idols. Do you commit sacrilege? You said they shouldn't have another idol. Yes, they do have another idol. You said that you not do this thing, and then you even, you even differentiate yourself like them, like 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 Peter. When when Paul got there, Peter was what like I don't want to, I don't want them to know that I've been dealing with these people. But to be sincere, when no believer is there, you don't care sitting down together with them if they are drinking beer, if they are drinking alcoholic. Whom are you deceiving? You're deceiving yourself. And then Paul was saying, you who say a man should not commit a, a go forward, you who make your boast of the law, through breaking the law, you dishonor God. I, you, every one of us, we are the one that does not let unbeliever come back to the church. They know you more than we know you. And then your attitude, your way of life, I destroy the testimony of your Christianity. Then how God is going to reign? God will save everyone of us in Jesus' name. He will be everyone of us in I mean, out in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why when you look at the topic very well, look at that whole topic, and I thank God for our children. Total freedom from no partial. If I'm um, Chancellor, I don't want uh, Stephen to know so that uh, he will not know that I'll, I'll have money. But by the time Stephen come out, I mean go out, we will quickly go to that market, we buy the chicken. And then, so we will eat before he comes. Have you not had anything? Then sometimes, I and Brad Stephen, we talk very well. I don't want my wife to know. And something's <laughs> because if she knows, this word, uh, unfortunately, I, I do know that I'm telling Brother Stephen that I'm a good liar to my wife. But God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Christian journey is very, very tough. It's very, very, and then that's why Jesus Christ said there will be tribulation the part of that tribulation is this you want to present something to your wife or your wife want to present something to you 
He knows your I know in the beginning of our marriage. That part of the difficulty we have. She wants to tell me something. The way I was born, it's not the and the way she, way she was trained was not, it was not the way she, I was trained. If my wife have one million dollars now, it doesn't take that spreading that one million dollars. If it's Brahmati, Brahmati may want to spend, give out maybe fifty thousand dollars out of it. Okay, my husband, I want to do this. It's not possible. Then fear coming. Immediately fear coming, the spirit of the Lord is no more there. Because where there's where, where there's the spirit of the Lord. There's liberty. That's area whereby we Christian we need to come together. What will I say? That will lead my this brother into sin. What will I do? That will lead my sister into sin. What step will I take? That I may not know, but indirectly I've killed his spiritual life. So that every one of us can be totally free from sin. Not partial one. Dirty one. That have no fear that is genuine. Not before only woman being, but before Almighty God. That I know Abraham. He will not go away from my Lord. That's the total freedom. And that's why we can be so boastful. We can be genuine. Whenever we are saying the word of the Lord. Because individual, as a member, as a family, we know one another. And know, you know what I can do. I know what you can do. Let's apply wisdom sometime. It's applying the wisdom of devil. And that is skinny a lot of marriage. It's skinny a lot of relationship. It's skinny a lot of confidence. I'm praying that because of my position in the job, you know, there's something that I always do that is very bad. I include myself. And I make example. I'm praying that God, mighty God, will elevate me before that. And God will elevate everyone above that in Jesus' name. I've, I've, I've taken two examples now about myself. I was conscious of it, but I know. But is that a partial free from sin or absolute? Free from sin. Let us be sincere. And that's why the, our lesson today say total freedom from sin. And that's why I call this church deeper life. Abraham lie. Yes, he put us into problem. I just started listening to the Simon the month. He does that. Yes. It, it puts uh, Jesus into a problem. Um, um, Peter, he does it. Do not forget. He has grace. If not the grace of the Lord. That God say, I was praying, I'm, I'm praying for you. Peter will have gone. So there's nothing that has no consequence. And the wages of sin, the cause, the consequence of sin is. So let us be careful, my dear brother and dear sister. Do not think that how can we, how are we, how are we going to make it? We will make it, and we will get there. And we are getting there today in Jesus' name. But do not forget what Jesus Christ said. He said you will face that tribulation. That part of the tribulation is to absolutely, absolutely free from sin. It's not, he, he, sometimes it's very, very difficult. But if you are a child of God, 
was it day before yesterday I was talking to uh, is it Brad Stephen that there are two things in this world if you think you are lying I do not know use yourself that you lie you know that you are lying and then who told you that you are lying I do not know who told you except I do, I do not want to sometimes <laughs> except you just shut up You don't want to say anything just because of your natural habit that follow peace which has been your blood follow peace with all men i know this is part of the art saying the bible say but that's the true word of the god let us call upon the name of the lord father you will set me free is i won't deceive you you take grace it takes challenges. But lying does not have any to lie. Brahmati, do you have one, one, one uh, dollars in your... I want to buy something. I don't know if one my brother that tested me that day. And I said no. Because I was thinking that that's the one dollar I want to give to a woman. And then if I say yes, there's a little that, oh, I love a woman more than him. And he has been sacrificed to come to the church. But what have I done? I'm just making an example. You know yourself. Within you and your husband, within you and your wife, within you and your children, between children and you. You know yourself. Then we are saying, God, take me home. Take me home. Take me home. Which home? And we said there's internal security. We are blaming some people that there was an internal security. I even answered the question that there was internal security. But I, the little line I was making is that I was... I was cutting eternal security for myself that I will make it. Call upon the name of the Lord. But I want you to know if you practice it, you will see how your flesh, everything is going to be free. Total freedom. And even people that know you, they will say, No, I know him. He will not compromise. He will not do this. I trust him. God will help you. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of the message from our leader. We thank you, Lord, for you. Let us search ourselves once again as a member of Deeper Life Bible Church. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your grace will continue to be upon us in Jesus' name. Ability to walk in that way successively without hypo hypocrisy, Father, you will give to us in Jesus' name. And uh, our conscience, our testimony will continue to be full in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. Praise the Lord. Once again, we all welcome to the house of the Lord. It has been a time of refreshing. And pray that God will minister unto everyone of us in Jesus' name. Every Sunday like this um, is our Sunday service. And to those of us who don't um, know the time, it starts by 8.15. That the grace of God was in at 11.30 to 12 p.m. So when we invite people, let's always make them to understand um, the starting time that, that will start so that they will always be here in time also. And as we do so, God will bless us in Jesus' name. And on Sunday evening is a house fellowship. It's very, very necessary. The time we will come together also as family. And we discuss the word of God. 
We're praying. And also, it's also an, an avenue for us to expand the house of the Lord. And that Sunday evening also is also for evangelism and and visitation. It is being alternated. And we pray that as we invite our, those people around us, whether they come to on, on a particular time or none, let's keep on inviting them so that they will be able to fellowship with us also in our house. And if they come, and I promise you that God will, will touch them and before you know what, they will be with us in, in the church. On Monday is our Bible study. As I always say that the Word of God is a weapon. It is the brick in which we use to build our faith and to build our spiritual life. It's our foundation. So we shouldn't be tired of hearing the Word of God. And as we come to the Bible study every Monday by 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., God will enrich us with His Word. And also, let's invite friends and those people around us in our working place, in our environment, and also lay emphasis on what you are benefiting from coming to the house of the Lord. And when they come also, their life will be blessed in Jesus' name. On Thursday is our online conference prayer. And the time is 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The conference prayer that is done through phone communication. To join this online prayer, there is a dialing number, which is 712-775-7035. And the access code is 344823. There are other people joining us on that online conference prayer. So let's be encouraged and also find time to join. And our lives will never remain the same in Jesus' name. On the first and third Monday, of the month is our night video. It starts after the Bible study. Then we just go ahead to by 10 p.m. we do the all night prayers. It has been a time of refreshing. And and God has been doing so many things through those prayers. And as you find time to join us, every fallow ground in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. And also, in uh, the back, also there is um back of our paper is a DC program. So let's go through it and um, find the time to attend. Ask many as more that that pertinent unto us. Now, so keep on with this, with these activities, girls' activities, and work in our life will never be abandoned, and our lives will be a finished project and not an abandoned project in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for offering. Offering time. Offering time. Amen. Let's lift our offering as tight and offering before the Lord. 
You are worthy, O Lord, to be praised and to be honored. For thou have created all things, and they are well created. You are the giver of life. You are the giver of words. The power to make words is from you. Father, from the burdens, O God, you've given unto us, that we are bringing this, O God, to support your work, that the work you've given unto us will be well financed. Father, as we're giving, O God, we're giving away luck, we're giving away limitation, we're giving away every losses. For that you will rebuke, O God, your caterpillars and the palm and warm for our sake in Jesus' name. Father, bless the hands that give. Bless, O oh God, the hands, O oh God, that I have none to give, that next time, O oh God, they will be able to give to your work. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we we'll pray. He has done for me he has done for me oh, what my mother cannot do what my father cannot do he has done it for me he has done for me what my mother cannot do, he has done for me. He has done for me. Let's rest to our feet for praise and, and worship. Let's go. 
Crazy. 